Hey everyone, welcome back to Wixfix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and today's video, we are gonna be creating a toggle box inside of Wix Studio. Now I am gonna be splitting this into two separate parts and that is because here we have a multi-state box right here and then we're gonna have a button that are that's outside of the multi-state box that's gonna be changing the state. So I'm gonna be showing you how to set that up in today's video. And then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create these custom buttons that's it's gonna visually show our users which state is currently active. Now, the reason we want to create these custom buttons just like this is because with regular buttons like this one right here, there's only two states. There is the default state and there is the hover state. There is no active or inactive state. So creating custom buttons will allow us to do that. Another thing to mention is the reason we want to have the buttons be on the outside of the multi-state box is because there's gonna be a lot less code that we'll need to take care of. So if you wanna learn how to create these custom buttons, the video should already be live on the channel for channel members. So if you want to see it early you can press that join button down below the video but without further ado let's go ahead and jump right in so now we're in wix studio and the first thing i want to do is create our grid layout so what i want to do is come on over to the add button and under quick add we're going to add this container let's go ahead and stretch it for the design we're going to remove the background color then we're going to scroll down to layout and we're going to add an advanced css grid and under the template layouts what we're going to choose is the one by two so now we have two different rows here. Now I do want there to be a little bit of a gap in between these rows. So I'm gonna set this to be maybe 42 pixels, something like that. And then I want to scroll down to position and under the margin, I'm gonna apply a 5% margin. And once it adds the 5% margin to the top, we can easily select apply to all sides to have this layout, perfect. So for this top area, we're gonna to want to add our buttons. Now, like I said, in the next video, we're gonna be creating our custom buttons, but for today, we'll just go ahead and stick to regular buttons. So I'm just gonna grab this button right here, and I'm gonna change the text to say state one. Then I'm going to copy and paste this button, move it right beside it, and we'll change the text to state two. And last but not least, we'll add a third button, and we'll change this to say state three. I want to grab all three of these, and I wanna stack these together. And under the item spacing, I want these all to have the same spacing. So I'm gonna set this to be like 16 pixels. And then I want to scroll down to the position and we'll just align this to the center. Now that this is complete, I actually do wanna grab all three buttons and I want to change the radius to 12 pixels for these. Just so that there's a nice rounded edge. Even though these are temporary, I do want this all to look a little bit nicer. So now that we're done with the buttons design in the stack, what we now want to do is remove the height from this row. So with the background container selected, we can head down to layout and under this top row, which is this one right here, we can select this min and max and we'll just simply set this to minimum content. And what that's gonna do is it's going to shrink the height of this row to match the height of the content inside of it. So since all three of these buttons are technically 42 pixels in height, then that means this row is now technically 42 pixels in height. So I guess it's a little bit more, it's 42.8, but you kind of get the idea. We're just gonna switch that back over to minimum content. Now for the second row, we can see that this is set to 50% as the maximum value. So we want this to be a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is actually, instead of saying min and max, I'm just gonna set this to auto and it's gonna take up the remainder of the space. Great. But now what we want to do is start adding our multi-state box. Now, if I head on over to the add panel and go to layout tools, you'll notice we don't have the multi-state box option here. In order to access this, we need to first go over to code and we need to enable this feature. Once code is enabled, we can now go back over to the add panel and under layout tools, we will now see multi-state box. So let's go ahead and add this to the page. The reason we do not see the multi-state box in the add panel when the coding is turned off is because in order to use the multi-state box, you kind of need to use code. So this layout tool is hidden behind the code panel here. But now that we've added this multi-state box, we wanna make sure that we attach it to our grid row. So I'm gonna grab the top left corner where it has this 
four white dots and I can drag this and you'll now notice that the container box is highlighted and at the very top you'll notice a little attach option there. So once we have that option, we can let go and now the multi-state box is inside of our container. Now what I want to do is stretch this to the row so it's taking up this whole area here and inside of this, all I want to do is turn off scaling properties and for the corners, we're gonna set this to 24 pixels just so it has a nice rounded edge. Now inside of this multi-state box, all I want to do is just create a very, very simple section here. So I'm gonna add a container, I'm gonna stretch it, I'm gonna remove the background color, I'm gonna head down to layout and we're gonna split this into a two by one grid with a five VW gap in between. And then last but not least, we'll head on to margin and we'll set this to have a 5% margin and we'll apply this to all sides. Perfect. Now over here in the left hand side, we're just gonna add a very simple image. So we'll go to quick add, drag an image, we'll stretch it and under the corners, we'll set this to 24. Now I don't typically like our corners to, especially the radiuses to be responsive. So I'll typically turn off scale properties here. That way on all screen sizes, the rounded edge of the corners here are always set to 24. Then over here on the right hand side, all I want to add is a title and I want to add a paragraph just like that. So we'll drag both of these over into the right column, place these right on top of each other. Then we'll select both and stack them together. We'll extend this out just a little bit. And if I scroll down here in the inspector panel, I wanna to go to that down to the position area and I want to select this little plus icon that basically says align to center. This is going to align it to the center of the grid cell it is in, which it's in the right grid cell. Perfect. For this text right here, all I'm gonna do is say state one, and this is going to be our state one. Now, in order to create multiple states, what we now need to do is select the multi-state box. Now, there are multiple ways to do this. The first way is using the breadcrumbs. So if I grab this container and I go back to the multi-state box, we will now have the manage states option here. Alternatively, if we head on over to the layers panel, we'll have the multi-state box option here and then we can press manage states. Now, if I switch over to box four, now you'll see this is another blank canvas. However, if I just want the same design to be for all three states, what I can do is just select this one right here and delete it. And then I can duplicate box five two more times. And if I switch over to this box right here, I can change this one to be state two. And just so there's a little bit more visual difference, I'm gonna change the image really quickly. Perfect. And if I grab the multi-state box again and we choose box 10, we'll change this one to say state three. And again, we'll change the image. Now, one thing I will say is with the multi-state box, if we press manage states, I will typically want to name these different values because box five, box 13 and box 10, that's a little bit hard to remember, uh, especially with the more states that you have. So I'm gonna press the three dots, I'm gonna press edit ID, and I'm gonna call this one state three. Then I'm gonna come over to box 13. We'll notice that it says state two. So when I come over to edit the ID, I'm gonna call this one state two. And then last but not least, we'll grab box five, we'll edit the ID, and we'll call this one state one. So now we have state one, state two, and state three. And now it is time to code. Now the reason I want to make this video is because the documentation that you would typically find to make the multi-state box work only really works if the button is already inside of the multi-state box. However, the way we set this up is the buttons are on the outside of it. So how can we change the multi-state box states from outside of the multi-state box? In order to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this button right here, which this one is button three. We're gonna grab this button right here. And if I open up the coding panel here, you'll see that this is called button three. But I might call this one state one BTN. Then I'll grab this button right here. And I'll call this one state two BTN, for, which is short for button. And then we'll grab the last button here. We'll call this one state three BTN. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this code here. And what I want to do is actually grab this first button here, which is the state one button. And I actually want to scroll down to the event handlers. And we want to use the on click event. So I'm gonna click this and we're gonna press add event. Now it's gonna add this little function down below and I'm just gonna erase all of the kind of information around it. 
and I'm just gonna leave the function here. Now, when this button is clicked, what do we want to happen? We want this multi-state box to change the state. So what I'm gonna do is grab the multi-state box. However, if I grab the multi-state box, we'll see that the name is called multi-state box one. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna say dollar sign W and I'm just gonna type in multi-state box one and I'm gonna add a period. Now, what do we want to do? We want to change the state. And then we're gonna add parentheses and then we're gonna add these little quotation marks and we can change the state. So when state one button is clicked, we want it to change to state one, just like that. Now I'm gonna go down a couple lines here and I want to select the state two button and I'm gonna add another click event. Again, I'm gonna remove all of these little information and comments. That way I'm just left with the function itself. And I'm going to just copy this little text here and paste it. But instead of it being changed to state one, we just wanna change it to state two. Now you might be wondering, why am I not just copying this whole entire thing and pasting it and then changing this one to state three and state three. And that is because for some reason, copying and pasting event handlers don't always work. So it's always better with event handlers just to set them up manually every time. So once again, I'm gonna grab this state three button, add the on click event, delete the details and comments, and then I'm gonna copy the text from inside of the event handler and I'm gonna paste it there. And again, we wanna change this to state three. So now when I go ahead and preview the website and we wait for it to load, right now it's on state one, but if I select state two, it'll switch over to that state, state three, and then state one. So as you can see, that is gonna be the easiest way to link external buttons to multi-state states. Again, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create custom buttons that have hover, active, and inactive states that we can toggle using animations and effects. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix and Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I will see you all in the next one.